we are here to mostly discuss about the complex uh, hypothesis and the vision of uh, P.R. Sarkar. Uh, P.R. Sarkar is, uh, is accepted as a great philosopher of the last century and uh, uh, he is the only philosopher who has uh, spoken about every subject on earth. And to a scientist like me, he is a very famous scientist and a philosopher. So this is a very interesting part. Now, uh, the problem is that the kind of uh, hypothesis, we can say philosopher doesn't give a hypothesis, philosopher gives a vision. Now, we, uh, we don't understand vision because you are normal mortals, we don't understand vision. But our whole idea is to understand what P.S. Sarkar thought. If we can achieve that much, that would be a great thing to do. Now, as you see, almost 100 years now he was ago, he was born. And it took a century to come to this kind of seminar to discuss about him. So you can imagine how slow we are. He never left an area where we have started thinking now. And this uh, microbiota is such a, uh, because I am a professor of cancer biology, so my interest is in cell, tumor, cancer, developing new technology. So I have been studying cells for the last 35 years, single cell. You take a single cell, you study them. So by uh, analyzing the cells for so many years, I suddenly even read the book about microbiota in 2008. I found that it is a conglomeration of physics, cosmology, metaphysics, then uh, <coughs> uh, biology and chemistry. Every area of science has been conglomerated. So that was very interesting. Then I realized that all over the world, people have been discussing microbiota, mostly in foreign countries and very little in the, our country. So by contacting those people over the last 12 years, uh, we found that the subject is too fast and it's very difficult to understand unless you have a very fine state of mind and the mind has to be fully loaded with code of conduct. He made some kind of strict guideline that it's not the rational reductionism, it is the wholesome science and the future science. So if you understand, the, if I discuss microbiota, it's not the right forum because uh, the te technical component and the future technology which will come out of this, it's a long way, but needs a special forum. But uh, for the normal audience, like I am also considered myself normal, to align with the audience, we have to understand it together. Because uh, we have to focus, before we talk about microbiota, we have to focus the vision he saw about the microbiota age. So this is the criteria. Now I started to change my talk after listening to Professor Aditya Mahanti. I decided instead of being more technical and understanding his mind through scientific perspective, what he thought about microbiota, I thought that I would expand where Professor Aditya Mahanti ended. He was talking about neo-humanism. And microbiota, if two aspects I'll speak, one thing Prabhat Vrindh Sarkar's vision of the microbiota age. His whole uh, mind was actually projecting the future. And second part is actually, beside the future, anybody can have a vision like Nostradamus, but uh, the difference between the a visionary and a engineering vision is that he developed scientific uh, doctrine how to achieve that microbiota age. It might take 200 years, it doesn't matter. But the kind of strategic uh, design is made, designing that future the microbiota age. What is microbiota age? Microbiota, they understand, is the future of mankind. And that includes, first thing, high tech. He was a great proponent of the high technology. And uh, he discussed about high technology. And then, second thing, he discussed about the meaningful living through high technology. Second. Third, these two can be only achieved to highest level of code of conduct. And fourth, if these three levels are maintained, then we will have complete knowledge and this knowledge is make us uh, bring the awareness in every human being. So this microbiota has its five component. One is the high technology society, second thing meaningful living, third with high code of conduct and fifth then being awareness with all the knowledge acquired through this above four subject. So it's very complicated. That's so why everybody in this planet should read two books I guess. One is Ananda Sutram, one is a microbiota in a nutshell. I think these two are the main cracks of philosophy where everything is more just from cosmology to knowledge.
to materialism, to code of conduct, to humanism, to everything possible on earth and that make you aware. So this microbiota age is actually we call, many western professor now have renamed it, called it the futurology of my Prabhupada Sarka. That means he has seen the future like many visionaries do, but only difference between P.S. Sarkar and other philosopher is that he actually has engineered and has a structural design how to achieve that future, step by step. So now, second thing I'll come back now. If this uh, you want to attend this microbiota age, which every biologist, every physicist have dreamt of, including Stephen Hawkins, you must have heard, who wrote the brief history of time, who wrote already in high school, he's still talking about his vision and his uh, dreams. Now, his first uh, uh, quadruplegic is going to space now in a for the traveling new spaceship. So now he mentioned one thing in 1956, I guess. He said the future of mankind is a sexual reproduction. That means the future of mankind will be lived in mostly technological society where the marriage, children will be completely economic liability and destruction of mind because half of our life you keep just sitting, standing near the school bus to let your child go to school. And that's the wastage of time. And uh, as a physicist, he said, and now sexual reproduction is also disadvantages for male. Every time a profits, you have to carry a bag for Brazil. Okay. So now this is a lot of wastage of energy for making some babies. And above all, the outcome is also very disastrous. A lot of babies being world a disastrous place. So now Stephen Hawking's foresight that future mankind should be based on sexual reproduction. It's his fantasy or dream, but the same voice was confirmed by two philosophers. One Prabhupada Sarka and another is called the modern biologist like us. What we see here? We see that uh, over evolution, our Y chromosome is breaking up. Because normally the female have two X chromosome, they make the female, and male has one X, one Y. And now science shows that uh, the, because of the 2x chromosome, females are emotionally more stable than men. And they are physically also more stable because most of the aborted fetus in the hospital, you find they are of male. Because they can survive in the scrutiny process. And the science says now that this is because of male doesn't have 2x chromosome. Okay? No, there is a, a new uh, gene discovered called microRNA. They found that the microRNA is very fertile in both X chromosomes and they are actually responsible for the immune system. And because male is only half, so they are half immune tolerant than the females. That's because the women's uh, immune tolerance is very high, they are only capable of producing babies, not male. Okay? He can't stand a headache even because you hit somebody before you get headache after the headache comes. <laughs> so this is the first part. And second part, the only evolution. Uh, it is discovered that our Y chromosome is shrinking because the number of genes we have in our Y chromosome, they are all gone. Because as you see when the men become more modern after the ape line segregated, they find that ape has maintained their body hair nicely, man has become less body hair, no first observation. And men also go to beauty parlor to take their eyebrows now. <laughs> so this is a, another metrosexual they call. So it is a result their hormonal imbalance, polluted food, and their uh, attitude, and being being afraid of dominated by women has made them less men. Okay? That's why we have only 13 genes left in the Y chromosome, which could be have vanished in 600,000 years. So that means male will be extinct species in the future. Okay? This is a book published, you can check in internet. It's called the Y chromosome, the package of the Y chromosome. So this is a biological reality. And if you compare the ape to white chromosome, gorilla and the male, you find that the gorillas have 33 left gene, male has only 13 left. And our 13 genes are basically sperm producing genes. That means if you take all the sperm out of the male and kill all the male, the earth will be as fertile as ever. <laughs> okay, if this is the future, and besides, when the earth will get polluted, then you can't stay here anymore. And men cannot populate in space to produce children. So they have to carry the embryo along with wherever they go. The movie has been clearly shown in the Earth Interstellar, the Hollywood movie, anybody has seen it. Because they have tried to successfully make procreation possible in space, it's not possible. 
without gravity. So in that case, we need to take all the sperms of the male and freeze them. You don't need male. That's exactly the future. So this scenario, so now scientists have gone into cloning level. If you want to clone, and only you need the male sperm, you can also create sperm in the laboratory. So obviously, though we will have engineered babies. The engineered baby is not to make a Shahrukh Khan, but intellectual, a man with awareness, a man with virtue, and man will take over next generation. So this is what the Stephen Hawking saw in a very crude way, and biology see in the real practical way, the daughter way, and Pierre Sarkar also believes in same thing. Pierre Sarkar says that in the future of mankind, it's actually lab grown babies. Where you don't spend time on procreation, don't spend time on getting school boss and marketing and uh, surviving from money and you do more intellectual work and more awareness about God. So this is one of the future logic here. So first, it's very important. This Whatever is said around 50 years or 70 years ago, being slowly documented with the development of science. So we scientists think he's a great scientist. But obviously, we can call his vision as hypothesis. Because hypothesis is based on rationality. We are scientists and little people. We see five facts, we cannot make a six. We combine the five, bring out the potential six. Okay, but we can make six. So this is called the rationalizing procedure, science operates. But you see the science for the last hundred years for reductionism. But the science we are talking about the future is actually wholesome order science. I am bringing this word wholesome order. I am borrowing this word from the great quantum physicist called David Paul. He was a American physicist. He was born similar year as Prabhat Sarkar was born 1919 or 1920 and he also passed away in 1990. So he was a great quantum physicist and uh, in the last part of his life, after publishing all the theory possible mathematically, he also believes in the same thing. Uh, three things I'll quote. David Baum and his contemporary Pierre Sarkar. See how Pierre Sarkar is probably just a graduate. David Mom is the highest form of human mind in quantum physics. And interestingly, you find there is a lot of similarity also. And the last part of his life, David Baum, he tried to work with Hindu Krishnamurti. And also 25 years of research and philosophy. So ultimately, he became a Upanishadic person. Now, see what he said. He said, uh, I mentioned biology. Now, Pierre Sarkar said another thing part also. He said, I'll come to the, all these things belong to microbital, I'll come back later on because all this to know his vision, no point of discussing individual subject. He also mentioned that uh, mankind has harvested energy from nucleus by breaking the nucleus. Over 100 years, we have been trying to bombard the nucleus, making it energy. That's why the hydrogen bomb came out, or new nuclear power came out. But actually, the more power comes when you break a single cell. Individual single cell for my body or our body consists of 120 trillion cells total. Every cell, some cells form a liver, some form a kidney, some lung, some a brain. So same cell, but when they stay in a different place clustered together like a community, they behave a little different. My liver cell, my brain cell are not very different. In today's technology, you can convert liver to kidney, kidney to bone, bone to blood, or through stem cell technology. But the point is, because they live in one cluster community, they follow the same music. Okay. Now, all the cells, for example, 120 trillion cells, uh, uh, Pierre Sarkar mentioned that if you develop technology how to break a cell nucleus, you will get tremendous amount of energy and you can harvest them. So, this is called the new technology. So, the microbiotide is five component. One is developing new technology, thinking ahead of time. David Baum says again, if I ask you to make a map of Visakhapatnam. The map will be as big as it's a Visakhapatnam. It's not a map. So how to make a map? That means we have delete 95%, 99% of Visakhapatnam landmark. We'll take one selected landmark of Visakhapatnam. So I can write down in a one foot by one foot piece of paper. I can put in a pocket and drive a car. So what he did? He did a process of filtration. Whatever jump knowledge, empirical knowledge, then uh, comparative knowledge we collected, they become a the junk. Unless you develop a new idea how to filter, to get a glass of water to drink, you have to filter a lot of water in the machine. So, okay. so similarly, so this is the way, whatever knowledge we collected, it has come to a standstill point. So we have to develop a new idea, how to develop the filtering process. 
So now, this 120 trillion cells, for example, if we laboratory we try to break it, we will have a tremendous amount of energy. We can utilize them for every purpose. That's the fear of idea. And same thing, while I was thinking for the last 25 years, that cell breakage will be a very difficult job. And then, if you are able to do that, then you can harvest the energy from our own body itself, in the laboratory itself. So this is the second part. So you see the symbolically, I gave two examples that the micrometer is an integral component will be high technology. Okay. Once you involve this high technology, you want a much the interpropriation, first part. And second thing, you cannot develop this high technology unless you are impeccable code of conduct. And unless you high impact code of conduct, then you cannot have a collection of wholesome order knowledge. David Baum says, this is a wholesome order. What is a wholesome order? He published a book called Implicate Order. Everyone wrote that book, Implicate Order. He says, whole universe is connected. Every atom is connected. That means one atom in the another galaxy exactly knows what this atom is doing here. So there is a universal wholesome individual. The universe is separate from the cosmic energy wave. That means matter comes out of the energy and the matter goes back to the night. Even Buddhists in 4th century, they say, Buddhists and Hindu philosophers debating about the universal flux. Buddhist says that a phenomenon are actually come and go without any background. Now, Upanishad never believed that. He said nothing, nothing can come out of nothing. There is an undifferentiated platform like a drama stage pendulum, where there is a black screen pendulum, where one actor comes in, finish the part, get behind the screen. So the whole universe is an undivided substratum of an undifferentiated matter. So we as the phenomena, me speaking, or you sitting, all the universe that you foresee, they are actually coming out of that black substratum. And then when we finish our part, we automatically dissolve. And David Baum proves it mathematically by saying that uh, this is the, the whole universe is separated from the energy. How? Because the matter is, comes out of energy. That's the first part. And the second part he says that beyond this visible, tangible universe we see, there is an invisible universe where with all wholesome individual whole, whole, whole order. It all is wholesome order. Now what is the example? He proves it mathematically that the electrons, you don't see them. When you try to photograph them, you can't photograph them because they are moving so fast. So they have their own life. Individual electron, whole life, whole speed, they are moving together. They are still take a picture. All this picture if you see in the internet, it comes like a day. That means you put a track while in the moving pathway. You cannot travel. They are not say they are at the same time at the same moment. But you take the picture, they go to another, another. That's why you take a picture of electron on hydrogen orbital, you find it's a ray. Okay. Now, very interesting. The experiment was done both on his mathematical uh, calculation and also some experiments shows that uh, when matter has four states, you know, one is liquid, one is solid, one is gas, one is plasma. Fourth state of matter. So now, liquid, you know, water, solid is ice. Steam is the vapor and there is another fourth state which is not